Great point to note right now, I'm going to a college football game in the Ohio State, the Ohio State University football stadium. Now it's college football, but they have rules against cameras. You can take a point and shoot. I would like to take a zoom lens to take good images in that situation, but I'm going to go ahead and take this, my Canon G5, articulating screen for those street-ish sports type photography, five megapixel. Let's see how it does. Let's go. Started off in the VIP Corona Bar Lounge then. Check it out. Great performance, beautiful CCD images, wonderful articulating screen. I love it. Another option as we approach the end of 2023 and we go into party season, an option for a camera that you can take to those Christmas events, Hanukkah, whatever it is that you're doing, is this, the Canon G5. Now, a really good point to note. This camera was actually bought out in June of 2003. A 20-year-old camera is what I'm looking at in front of me. Why am I suggesting that this beautiful 20-year-old camera be your choice to take to your wonderful 2023 Thanksgiving, whatever it is you're doing? It's a camera that you can pick up in today's market for less than $50. And yes, this is me hunting to you another beautiful CCD retro vintage camera. Fun fact, I took this camera with me last night to a college football game, got it out to take some images of the game itself, and the person next to me said, wow, is that a vintage camera? And I did actually say vintage. I was taken aback a little because I don't consider these older CCD cameras to be vintage. I shoot 120 film, out of a camera from the 60s. I own in my collection a Graflex camera that is from 1955. To me, that is a vintage camera. This beautiful CCD, well-developed Canon G5 is still a viable option in today's market to create beautiful pictures. It was a big deal for Canon back then. There are a bunch of Canon cameras still today that carry that G thoroughbred logo. The G5, in fact, superseded the G3. The G3 being a great camera, pretty similar in its specs to the G5. However, there wasn't a G4. Still, one of the writers on DP Review has suggested that the number four, or the pronunciation in the word four, in some Asian cultures and language, was too close to the word die. So clearly, Canon did not want to associate one of their beautiful flagship cameras with death. So the Canon G5 was born, and it did not disappoint in 2003. This particular powerhouse boasted five megapixels, a CCD sensor, and this beautiful articulating screen. I was able to take this little beauty into a college football stadium. The Canon G5, five megapixels of pure beauty. The PowerShot G5 is an absolute marvel. This particular bad boy, five megapixels. On the top then, on off button, depress, and then either flick to play or on. So camera on, and we automatically get that beautiful zoom. Now, we have an articulating screen here, so we're able to see what we're dealing with from our top down shot. Look at that bad boy. We can zoom right in so we can see what we're dealing with. And the focus is pretty snappy. 
Beautiful flash vibes there. And then we can zoom right out. Focus in again, nice and snappy. Love those flash vibes. Now this screen articulates all the way around. So we can see little selfie shots there of me doing a top down. What's up? Peak Design anchors, of course, on all my cameras. We have the ability to use a self timer remote, which comes with the camera and then multiple exposures, two frames a second. Zooming left and right here, and then obviously the wheel at the front is gonna enable you to change that f-stop. So we can see up here on the left, I'm changing the f-stop up to f8 for those landscapes, and then all the way down to f2 to get that beautiful bokeh. Just to let us know left if we wanna shoot, and then right if we wanna play. And then this wheel here, we have all of these options just to make our photography nice and easy. All the information we need is gonna be displayed on the screen in that one focus point in the middle. Flash select at the top, metering modes, and then beautiful macro mode available as well. We can adjust the viewfinder, depending on if we're blind or not. Manual focus available, and then our function and display keys. And on the back, we've got one of these wonderful white balance and also exposure bracketing. Exposure compensation is available as well for those backlit subjects. A USB port, that's how I get my images onto my laptop, AV out and DC in as well. And then the other side is where our flash memory card goes, just to press here and pull the memory card out, 16 gig CF card there. On the bottom then, tripod mount, and then just serial number information about the camera itself. On the front when we have another look, look at that beautiful PowerShot G5. What a beast. Press to turn it off. <clears throat> And then let's compare it to its fat cousin, the G2. We've all got a fat cousin, and the G2 is the chunky cousin to the G5. All in all, two beautiful cameras. If you've ever been to a football stadium, college football or British soccer, they're a little bit finicky about the type of camera you can take in with you. It must be a point-and-shoot camera. You can't go taking your DSLR with multiple zoom lenses. They may have something to say about that. The lens itself then, it zooms from 35mm, nice and wide, all the way down to 140, 145. With an f-stop of 2.0 up to 3.0, which isn't bad at all. Pretty fast lens. The images that I got when I zoomed into those football players kicking each other's butts were not too bad at all. Not very sharp, but we can still get an idea of what's going on. Back in the day, this is all that we had. But I think that the colors that came out of that CCD sensor are wonderful. Thank you for stopping in on this one. I love taking this to the OSU football game. I love the fact that we won, and I love the fact that OSU played so well. Great night out. Great night out with the fans. Great night out with this camera. Thank you for coming along with me. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.